Hey guys, welcome to a different kind of video that I'm doing today. Today I want to talk about betting on another sport, which is not something that I do that often, but it's something that I want to get into in the future. Now, I don't know if you realise this, but MMA as a sport is a low liquidity gambling sport, which means that the maximum bet limits, the most amount of money you can bet on MMA fights, is significantly lower than other major sports, for example, like football. Well, that becomes a problem when you're a professional gambler because it, it's very difficult to place big bets on traditional betting websites like Bet365, William Hill, Ladbrokes, etc. Because even though the max bet limits may appear to be high on these websites, as soon as you make just a little bit of money, as soon as they start to, to, to think that you might be a serious better that knows what they're doing, they'll either close your account down or severely limit you. Which means for guys like me, I am constantly fighting a battle to get hold of new betting accounts to use, which is an absolute nightmare. So guys like me, professional gamblers, would usually turn to betting exchanges to place their bets. And a betting exchange is basically where you bet against other people and the website is just the platform and they usually take like a 1% commission from you know the winning pot to actually make their money and some examples of betting exchanges are Betfair Exchange and also Matchbook. I prefer Matchbook just because of kind of like the layout and the, the you know the interface and everything but there aren't too many exchanges around Betdax another one but ideally when you reach a point in gambling where it's very difficult for you to be able to place big bets on traditional betting websites. You'd normally want to transition over to a betting exchange because a betting exchange will let you place wherever bets you want without fear of being shut down. But that is a bit of a problem when it comes to MMA because the liquidity, the amount of money total being bet within MMA betting markets is so much lower than other mainstream sports like football which makes it difficult for guys like me, like I say, to make big money because we're all always having to rely on other people to give us betting accounts to use and place big bets. So let me show you what I mean. So this is Betfair Exchange, which is, you know, arguably the biggest uh, betting exchange website in Europe. And here you see where it says matched. This is the maximum, this is the total amount of money that has been bet on these fights for the UFC. Now obviously it's currently 10 p.m. or 10 15 p.m. in the UK on Friday night so almost 24 hours exactly before this event is scheduled to start but as you can see there are just tiny tiny numbers that have been bet on on, on the MMA fights tomorrow. I mean look at this fight between Grant Dawson and Julian Erosa on the biggest but on the biggest betting exchange in Europe, only £4 has been bet on this fight. Which means if you wanted to bet on this fight, the maximum that you could bet at the moment would be 490 If you wanted to bet Grant Dawson, the most you could bet would be 496 and 101 If you wanted to bet on Julian Arosa, let's get the calculator out, the most that you would be able to bet would be £96 plus £96 plus 32 the most you could bet on Julian Arosa on this exchange would be £224, which is pathetic. Obviously not enough to make a living. So it's a difficult position to be in. Now, if you just look at it, the main event, Derek Lewis versus Junior DeSantos, only £13,000 has been bet on that fight. If we look at the max bet limits for this, just pathetic. If you wanted to bet Derek Lewis at the current amount of liquidity available on this site, the most you would be able to bet would be £77, which is absolutely pathetic. There's no way you can make a living from these kinds of numbers. Just pathetic. Now, obviously, throughout the week, you can bet more and more and more and more to get your money in, but it's a lot of hassle compared to another high-liquidity sport, for example, like football, the Premier League. Look at the liquidity that is available on the Premier League. Now, bearing in mind it's Friday and, and a lot more money will come in tomorrow morning before these games take place, but the liquidity is massive. Even the Huddersfield versus Bournemouth game, which has got the least amount of liquidity from all the games taking place in the Premier League this weekend, even that game has £24,000 matched on it compared to, well, that's significantly more than the entire UFC card on Betfair Exchange just on one football match. And then you also look at the max bet numbers. You know, if we look at, say, um, the game that I want to talk about today, which is Cardiff versus West Ham, if we go into this, 
you can see that if you wanted to bet on on West Ham tomorrow, instead of just being able to bet, you know, a, a couple of hundred pounds, you could bet thousands and thousands and thousands without fear of being limited or having your clo account closed down by the betting sites. So this is the reason why, even though at the moment I make a living from betting on MMA, I am very, very interested in. Uh, I'm very sorry, I don't know, I just got a weird error message, guys. I'm very sorry. But yes, I am very interested in learning other sports and getting into other sports because at the moment, every year, I make thousands betting MMA, which is great. I'm not complaining. But if I could use my skills to make money in another sport, that could potentially go to millions because the Premier League games have super high liquidity. And on another exchange matchbook, I'll just skim through it because I've already explained it. You can see again, here's the matched money on all these fights. Very, very low. Just £334 on Marion Renault versus Yana Kunitskaya. Um, let's take a look at the fight we want to bet this weekend. Tim Means against, uh, against Nico Price, if we go into this. So, say for example, you had... It, you found it very difficult to get big bets down on traditional betting sites like William Hill, Ladbrokes, Bet365. And you had a really good read on this fight. You wanted to fire off big money on Tim, Tim Means this weekend. If you look at the max bet limits on Matchbook, the most that you would be able to bet on him at the moment would be an absolutely pathetic £1,286. Which obviously, it's just not enough to make a living. You've got to be betting higher amounts than this. Whereas again, if you look at the numbers on the football... If you wanted to bet on West Ham tomorrow, you could bet five times that amount. And obviously, there's a lot more liquidity available on Betfair Exchange. 63,000 matched on this. You know, six times more than what we saw in the uh, in the Nico Price versus Tim Means fight. So that's the reason why I'm interested in other sports. I'm dipping my toe into other sports. And at times, I will talk about other sports and cover this journey of mine to transition into different sports on this channel. Because this is all about being a pro gambler. Channel name is Diary of a Pro Gambler. And I'm going to be bringing loads of different types of content to you over the next few years. It's not just going to be all MMA related. So I have... Uh, brought up this game specifically, Cardiff City versus West Ham, because I believe there's a very solid bet in this game, guys, that I want to share with you. And I don't know if you know this, I don't know if you if I've mentioned it before. If you if you're a member of my website, uh, mabettingtips.com, you probably know that I'm quite a big Cardiff City fan. I intentionally wore the Cardiff City tracksuit here, as you can see, and also I am a Cardiff City season ticket holder. There you can see, I can prove it. There it is. If ever you're at a Cardiff game, now you know where I sit. Come and say hello. And I want to show you all this just because I, I just want you to know that when I uh, give you MMA bets and MMA betting information, I go into a lot of depth. I just want you to know that before I talk about this game, I, I I do have a, um, a really good level of knowledge on Cardiff City, so I feel like the information I'm giving you in this video is coming from a good place, coming from an informed place. So ever since I was like four or five years old, I've been to like 90% of the Cardiff City home games, go to pretty much every single home game, and I've been to all their home games recently, and tomorrow they're playing West Ham, and to be honest with you guys, as much as it pains me to say it, I just don't think it's going to end very well for Cardiff at all. I think they're going to struggle bad against West Ham tomorrow. And as you can see, the odds currently on West Ham are around about 2.20, which is very, very generous. You know, if you were just to bet £1,000 on West Ham tomorrow, you would get 1200 back at these odds, which is very, very generous. And there's also a nice amount of liquidity on the betting exchanges, which is great. But obviously, I never give you information on this channel without backing it up with cold hard facts. So I just want to talk a little bit about why I think West Ham are a good bet tomorrow. And I'm not one of these guys that is. Um, I'm not one of these guys that is an emotional, uh, impulsive gambler. I beat that shit ten years ago. Got that out of my system. I don't tilt. I don't bet emotionally. Um, I can I can pretty much just look at information, assess information for what it is, and make a good betting decision based on the information available to me. You know, if my mum and dad were fighting, I'd be able to look at the strengths and weakness of both of them and uh, and be able to basically try and put my money in a strong position on who I think had the best chance of winning. And for the record, it would be my mum. She is very fierce. But the point I'm trying to make is just because I support Cardiff, there's no bias here. I don't have any favourite fighters, nothing like that. And as much as I love Cardiff City, as much as I want to see them win tomorrow, as much as it hurts me when they lose, I just I can see 
the truth for what it is and the truth is i think they're going to get annihilated by west ham tomorrow so let me just talk about a few of those reasons why so recently it is absolutely no secret that Cardiff have been leaking goals. We've looked very, very poor defensively and we've been conceding absolutely tons of goals. If we look at the, the recent results, you can see that in the last three games we've conceded 10 goals. And it could be a hell of a lot more, to be honest with you. Um, in the Wolves game, it almost felt like Wolves kind of took it easy on us. They were so dominant uh, that it, it could have been a lot more than... Than, than a 2 0 win for Wolves. And in the Everton game, again, Everton were really, really poor for large stretches of the of the game. They just counter-attacked us, basically scored every time they went forward from the, the, the first time they scored the first goal in the second half, they totally tore us apart. And again, if they actually would have put in uh, if they actually would have performed their full potential and gone for the kill and played as well as they did in their game following the game against us against Liverpool last Sunday, they could have put a cricket score on us. It could have been f easily five goals, just like against Watford. Cardiff are very very dodgy on in the at the back, and the reason why we're conceding so many goals lately is just because the players look so lacking in confidence. They're making a lot of individual errors. They are giving the ball away a lot when players get into possession it's almost like hot potato they're so scared of making a mistake they just can't wait to offload the ball and that means they're making really bad decisions giving the ball away easily making a lot of mistakes and basically gifting goals and gifting solid positions that opposition on a plate now this is also this is also a tough situation for us to be in because the thing that the thing that has kept us alive in the Premier League so far, the reason why we're not dead and buried and relegated already is because of the the, the atmosphere that we get at home games, you know. We can create, generate an intimidating atmosphere, we get behind the players, we get behind the club and there's no doubt about it that we are severely lacking in skill, probably skill for skill and technique and players the worst team in the league. But we're not quite in a, such a bad position as Huddersfield and Fulham because we, the home form, you know, the atmosphere, the crowd can generate at home, lifts the team, has an impact on the away team. And that's why we've been able to pick up wins against, you know, sides like Bournemouth uh, and sides like Southampton at home. That's why we've been able to grind out these wins. But that isn't there anymore. It's just not there. The recent home games against Everton and Watford, Watford were horrendous. And you're starting to see the crowd now get on the backs of the players there's not really that much energy in the in the uh, stadium anymore the players look nervous it's having an impact on the players and what you're noticing is in the past when city players would make mistakes the crowd would just shrug it off and continue to get behind them and continue to support them whereas now the crowd's getting frustrated and you can you can start to see them get on the players backs a bit and that is leading to the players really lacking in confidence and making more mistakes and I believe that's why we've been leaking so many goals lately because the atmosphere, the 12th man just isn't there anymore. It really isn't. And there may be some diehard Cardiff fans out there that would disagree with me, but the atmosphere has completely changed. And you've got to pin some of that on the players as well. If we look at the stats for the last two home games, um, I don't actually, I haven't had to actually had a look at these, but look, no shots in goal, no shots on goal against Everton and 33% possession. That was in the last home game, we lost 3-0. And against Watford, guessing it's not gonna be much better. Similar possession, 35%. And shots on goal was six. That's actually quite strange. I can't remember us having any uh, shots on goal. I'm guessing they were very, very tame shots that were uh, easily stopped by Foster because we weren't really competitive in that game at all, to be honest with you. So. You can see with with the away team having so much possession and and basically dominating these games, there's nothing for the crowd, home crowd to get excited about, and that's starting to have a big impact on the players. Also, there are a lot of rule. Uh, there are oh, also sorry. Let, let's let's carry on on the uh, leaking goals and home form uh, home form narrative. So, like I said, we've been leaking goals lately. It looks like every time a team has a dangerous attack, attack a significant attack, they're going to score. We're just wide open at the back. We cannot defend to save our, save our lives. Loads of individual mistakes and just gifting goals to the opposition players on a plate. And that's going to get even worse now because last week against Wolves, 
Our best defender, Sol Bamba, has been injured for the rest of the season. He tore his ACL, which is an absolute nightmare. For all the poor defensive performances we've put in this season, for all the goals that we've leaked, Bamba has been a shining light in, in defence. And the amount of game-saving tackles that he's made, the amount of match-winning tackles that he's made, um, you know, his presence defending set pieces, his leadership... It's a big deal. Sol Bamba is one of the one of the key players in, in the Cardiff team and in the Cardiff defence. And without him, I think things are going to get really ugly defensively. I think we're going to start to leak even more goals now and struggle very, very bad. It's a huge loss for us to have Bamba out for the rest of the season. Um, there are also rumours of you know a dressing room bust-up or a dressing room fallout. Warnock has, uh, has played this down. Warnock has said that there's still a good team spirit. This is all nonsense. Um, but there's no smoke without fire. And the players definitely aren't playing with the same energy, the same confidence, the same synergy that they had, you know, just a few months back when they picked up big wins against Bournemouth and Southampton. So something's definitely going on. There's no smoke without fire. Warnock's saying there's nothing going on in the dressing room, but the team is definitely not clicking and not gelling. They're not playing with such positivity and energy as they did just you know a couple months ago and it's not easy to get that back especially when you're losing big characters like Sol Bamba. Another, another reason why I think West Ham are a good bet here is because Neil Warnock cannot pick a team, he cannot pick the right team at all. It's really sad to say I do love Warnock, I hate to criticise Warnock, he guards the Premier League and he's an amazing guy. And my dad, I go to the every game with my dad my dad's 70 years old 70 same age as warnock and like my dad said he struggles to get up in the morning and take the dog for a walk you know father time catches up with everyone and warnock is 70 years old i mean it's got to be tough managing a premier league club i don't know if you've seen um the uh, the documentary about manchester city on amazon uh I forget what it's called i can't really remember what it's called actually let's find that out because that's a good recommendation for you um if you, haven't, if you haven't seen it, All or Nothing, that's it. This documentary is amazing. It's called All or Nothing. Um, and it's all a, basically like a behind-the-scenes documentary on Man City. You can watch it on Amazon, uh, on Amazon Prime. I do recommend it. It's absolutely brilliant. Now, the point I'm trying to make is I'm not trying to compare Cardiff to Man City. Obviously, they've got infinitely more resources than us. But when you watch that behind-the-scenes documentary, you start to get a good understanding of how many moving parts there are in running a football club and the level of detail you need to go into to compete with the best teams in the world because ultimately we're in the same league as Man City and you see the depth and the level of control that Pep Guardiola's got in the back room and all the people he's got working for him, how many different moving parts there are, how many different things to consider, how stressful it is, how intense it is and that can't be easy to manage for a 70 year old man. So they are starting to see signs that you know, everything's starting to fall apart because Warnock cannot pick the right team. He really can't. He, he persistently makes mistakes like playing a guy like Callum Patterson on the right wing that has no pace, uh, can't really hold the ball up, not really technical with the ball at his feet and in a, a crucial attacking position like right midfield, right wing, where you need to have players that can pick the ball up and run at defenders with it and creating goal, op goal scoring opportunities. When Patterson does get into these good attacking positions, he ultimately just gives the ball away because he's not te technically gifted enough to do anything with it. And that's just one of many um, mistakes that the Warnock keep, keeps making. He keeps playing people out of position, keeps making bad decisions, and his substitutions are also very, very poor. Goes for like-for-like -like substitutions, brings off the wrong players, brings on the wrong players. It's just a mess. So that's another reason why I think West Ham are decent this weekend so i think that i have covered just about everything other than the fact that we're not creating any goal scoring opportunities at all although i guess i have covered that by showing you that you know in in two home games we barely created any shots on target so yeah guys i am a cardiff city season ticket holder i love cardiff city i hope they absolutely prove me wrong and smash the shit out of west ham tomorrow but i just don't see it happening so full disclosure the odds are around 2.20 i think west ham are an absolute bargain and one of the best bets this weekend west ham have got a full strength team 
they are devastating going forward. Players that can hurt us really, really bad, like Felipe Anderson, Chikorito's in good form, and now Avic is back to full health. Um, they could really, really make an example out of us tomorrow because we just don't have the defenders to stop them from scoring. It's as simple as that. We don't have the quality, the, the patience to park the bus and make life difficult for them. It's just going to be a bloodbath, I think, guys. Unless something absolutely crazy happens, West Ham are going to dominate. And the only other thing... Um, that I would say about this game is that, um, yeah, I just uh, I don't think that the Cardiff have really got much of a chance tomorrow, guys. So I do recommend a cheeky little bet on uh, on West Ham, as much as it hurts me to say that. But hope you appreciated this video, guys. Hopefully, if you decide to uh, bet West Ham, they um, they lose and you lose because I want Cardiff to win. But yeah, in all seriousness. Hope you see the reasons why I think West Ham are a very good bet tomorrow. Oh, and I just remember there was one more thing that I wanted to say. Um, it's got to the stage, in, it's got to that stage in the season now where if we look at the league table, uh, I remember there was one more thing I wanted to cover. If we look at the league table here, you can see that West Ham are currently in ninth place. And they are basically safe. They are well above the relegation zone with only nine games to go before the end of the season. They are not going to be uh, relegated. So they can play with freedom. They can play with confidence. It doesn't matter if they get beat 10-0 by Cardiff tomorrow. Um, nothing's basically going to happen to them. They've secured their place in the Premier League for next season. And with that comfort comes a level of confidence for them to play with freedom and be able to go out and express themselves and basically have a laugh. And you know, if you've ever done anything athletically, you can really reach your flow state and you can perform to your full potential when there's no pressure on you and you can just go out and enjoy yourself and play with confidence and freedom. And that's one of the things that really worries me about this game tomorrow because they've got creative players like Felipe Anderson and Arnautovic that can just do big damage to a team like Cardiff who are very weak defensively and who are also lacking in confidence when these you know, big players can go out and express themselves and play with freedom and confidence without needing to pick up a result. It actually makes it easy for them to get a big result. You know, if West Ham were down here battling relegation with us in 16th or 17th place, it would be a much different game. It would be a high-pressure game that West Ham needed to win. And because of that, players would be more likely to make mistakes. There'd be more pressure on the game, etc., etc. You get what I'm saying. In contrast to West Ham's position where they can play with freedom, Cardiff struggling in the, in the relegation zone. Their play is low in confidence making tons of mistakes there's a huge amount of pressure on them tomorrow the crowd's getting on their back the atmosphere in the stadium's flat people are criticizing the manager you know some people calling for him to be fired negative headlines all over the place people calling the players out on social media it's not a good place to be in and all that pressure the weight of that pressure will lead them to play even worse and lead them to be even more low in confidence lead them to make even more mistakes the kind of makes that have been costing us recently so yeah at odds of 2.20 i think west ham are one of the best bets of the weekend as much as it hurts me to say that and if i find any more decent bets like this i will continue to share them on my channel particularly as i try and transition into other sports so we can go from making a few thousand or more than a few thousand but Ten, so we can go from making tens of thousands every year on MMA to potentially hundreds of thousands or millions on a sport like football. That's it for this video, guys. Hope you liked it. If you did, hit the thumbs up below, hit the subscribe button, and I'll be back tomorrow with some more content about UFC betting. Good night, guys. Too many thoughts on my mind. I can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing. I don't need no help. I don't need opinions, so don't waste my time then. I just been living online. My city don't show me no love, and that's fine. Fuck local radio stations. I got more plays than all of these rappers combined. I'm going, I'm going again. I've been going in. I'm fed up with so many things. I gotta just let it all out. I'm talking about the shit they've been talking.